One of the biggest challenges with learning to play John Coltrane's Giant Steps is that the harmonic rhythm of the chords only lasts for two beats. Coupled with the speed at which many jazz musicians play this tune creates further obstacles while attempting to create fluid lines that contain a melodic flow. The first step when tackling this tune is learning to play walking bass lines over the changes. That's what we're focusing on today, so grab your bass and let's get started. So when learning to construct a walking bass line over this progression, what's really important is to be cognizant about the melodic direction of your line. You see, many people approach playing walking bass lines like connecting the dots or painting by numbers with absolutely no awareness with what the melodic outcome should sound like. We should remind ourselves from time to time that music is an auditory experience and that the musical choices that you make while playing anything should reflect this. Check out how this walking bass line brings out the melodicism over the chord changes of John Coltrane's Giant Steps. Okay, so first of all, what we want to do is a harmonic analysis of Giant Steps. This is going to be really helpful to understand the structure and the form of this tune. Now, the form of this tune is 16 bars long, and we're going to divide this into two eight-bar sections so we can see what's going on. We can see the different direction of harmony that this tune is taking. Now, if you look at the first bar, second bar, and third bar, the first chords in each one of those bars you're going to have a B major 7, a G major 7, and an E flat major 7. This is representing the keys moving down in major thirds. And all of this tune is based on these three keys moving around in different ways. So this is very helpful. So if we start off with B major 7, this is a 1 major 7 in the key of B. Then I go 5, 7 to 1 major 7 in the key of G then 5-7 to 1 major 7 in the key of E flat. Then there's a little turnaround, which is A minor 7, D7, into G major 7, which is a 2-5-1 into G. So then on the second four bars, we start the whole sequence again. It's the same exact formula as the first, just starting on G. So I've got 1 major 7 in G, then I'm going 5 7 in E flat to 1 major 7 in E flat then I go to 5 7 in the key of B and then I go to 1 major 7 in the key of B and then there's another little turnaround F minor 7 to B, B flat 7 which takes us into the next 8 bars which is uh, starting in E flat so what's really useful about understanding these kind of structures is really to understand what the interval formula of it is because this will help you to memorize these things. So if you look at this, we start on B major seven, I'm moving up a minor third, then up a perfect fourth, then up a minor third, then up a perfect fourth, and then I've got that little turnaround is taking us into the G major seven, and then it's the same thing, up a minor third, up a perfect fourth, up a minor third, up a perfect fourth, and then I've got that turn around in E flat that takes us into the next section. Okay, so the next eight bars are a little easier to comprehend because there's more chords that are taking the space of one bar. Notice in the previous eight bars, we had a lot of chords that have the harmonic rhythm of two beats. And also you ha keep having that overlap of the five to one that's happening on the beat three of the previous bar going into beat one of the next bar. 
that's very hard to navigate if you don't understand these type of um, uh, harmonic progressions. So we start with the E flat major. That's a one in E flat major. Then I've got a two, a five, a one in G. And then I've got my two, five, one in the key of B major. And then I've got a two, five, one in the key of E flat major. And then I have C sharp minor seven to F sharp seven, which is taking me back to the top of the tune. Now, the thing in this section to really pay attention to is the, uh, the links between uh, these particular chords here. So if I start on the E flat major seven, the intervallic link to that next chord is gonna be a tritone either up or down. That's taking me to the A minor seven. So if I think of that when I'm there playing, I go, oh yeah, that's just a tritone away. That sets me up for getting into that next key, which is G major. Same thing here, it goes up a tritone to the C sharp minor seven, then F sharp seven, and then that resolves to B major seven. Same thing here, I go to F minor seven, that's up or down a tritone, then to B flat seven, and then to E flat major seven. Now, once it works its way back to the E flat major seven, the two five taking us back to the top of the tune is a major second down from the E flat major seven chord. So if I play that E flat major seven here so you can see it better, I've got that there, and then that two five in B, that's a major second down from the E flat major seven chord. And that's a useful tip because it can help you to really understand the structure more so you're not just like shooting in the dark when you're trying to like nail these changes. Okay, check it out. Okay, so what we want to do now is a melodic analysis of the bass line that I played over this. So we're starting at the top of the tune, B major seven lasts for two beats. I've got a root chromatic below the root of the next chord. The next chord is D7. I've got a root chromatic below the root of the next chord. The next chord's G major seven. I've got a root chromatic below the root of the next chord. The next chord's B flat seven. I've got a root chromatic below into the root of the next chord. The next chord's E flat major seven. This lasts for four beats. I've got root three, five chromatic below the root of the next chord. The next chord is A minor seven. I've got a root chromatic below the root of the next chord. The next chord is D seven. I've got a root chromatic below the third of the next chord. Okay, taking a look at the next four bars, we start off with G major seven. I've got a three going to a root. Over B flat seven, I've got flat seven to a chromatic below the third of the next chord. The E flat major seven, I've got three root. Over the next chord, I've got an F sharp seven, which is five root. Over the next chord, I've got B major seven, which is three root three five. Over the next chord, I've got F minor seven, which is root chromatic below the root of the next chord. And over the B flat seven, I've got root chromatic below the root of the next chord. Okay, so if we put those eight bars together, this is what it's gonna sound like. So picking it up from the next section, we start on E flat major seven, and we've got root three sharp 11 nine. Over the next chord is A minor seven, and I've got flat seven chromatic below the flat seven of the next chord. The next chord is D seven, I've got flat seven five. 
The next chord is G major seven, and I've got three root three five. The next bar, I've got C sharp minor seven followed by F sharp seven. And in this bar, what I'm doing is using a trick where I'm just thinking of the whole bar as that dominant chord. So instead of thinking of it as a C sharp minor seven to F sharp seven, I'm thinking the whole bar is F sharp seven. And I've got root chromatic above the flat seven back to the root. The next chord is B major seven. I've got three root, three, five. Over the F minor seven to the B flat seven, I'm using that same dominant trick where I'm just thinking of that whole bar as a B flat seven, and I've got root chromatic above the flat seven back to the root. The E flat major seven, I've got three, five, root three. And then over the C sharp minor seven, I've got five to the root. And then over the F sharp seven, I'm not even thinking about the chord, I'm thinking about the chord that follows that, which is the B major seven. And I've got a chromatic above, chromatic below that's taking me back to that B. Okay, so if we put these eight bars together, this is what it's gonna sound like. Okay, now you practice. You know, many players avoid working on giant steps because if you attempt to blag your way through the changes, it simply doesn't work. I personally avoided this tune for many years until I finally realized that Coltrane himself practiced this progression for years before unleashing it on the world. The methodology that Coltrane used was writing out countless choruses of lines and then learning those specific lines in every key until he could feel and breathe every essence of this progression without any conscious thought whatsoever. Until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.